Hello and welcome to episode 65 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter, while I'm still alive, at Andrew RLP. And joining me is League Freak. You can find me on Twitter, at League Freak. How you going, mate? I'm pretty good. You've been pretty crook lately, which isn't good. Um, but I'm uh, I'm really healthy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> good idea. Yeah, I, I seem to be getting inundated with man flu. This, yeah, this yeah. Up. Yeah, you keep on copping it. Uh, yeah, God, it's bastard by piss off. Yeah, just just blame the, the ladies. They keep making you sick. <laughs> nah, <'Cause> I'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll only lead to me sleeping outside somewhere. Yeah, oh, damn that, it. That's not going to make things better. Nah, not at all. So I've been blaming the cat instead. Fucking cat. Yeah, bastard. <laughs> um, anyway, today we're going to look at the... NRL team of the decade. Mm. Um, NRLs decide they're going to look at the team for the past 10 years, 2010 to 2019. They've already got a large panel um, of former players to determine this. Because apparently, do we know? Do we know who's on the panel? By the way, we know some of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got here: Mal Meninga, Andrew Johns, Wally Lewis, Bob Fulton, Phil Gould, Craig Bellamy, Trent Robertson, Ricky Stewart. Uh, included on the panel. Mm-hmm. And this is here. Hall of Famers Peter Sterling, Darren Lockyer, Danny Baderas, and Laurie Daly are among the other greats of the game to select their 17-man team. Okay. Well, that's interesting because, like, I'm just glad they don't have any of those outsiders, otherwise known as journalists, involved because they like to embrace journalists for some reason and I think that we should go the opposite way and shoot them into the sun. Well, I'm surprised they didn't have commentators on there, given that the commentators, not journalists, commentators, see mm. a lot of these blokes every week. Yeah. <coughs> but the other thing is, too, they've got um, coaches, current coaches, which you would think that current coaches would kind of lean towards some of their current players or if not like former players that they could always rely upon, which that's a big thing that people forget about coaches. They love players that they can rely on. So um, I find that a little bit interesting as well. Yeah. Um, it's always it's interesting always... when they put all current players on there, all former players, sorry, on there. Yeah. Because you're going to get pretty much the same sort of opinion every time. Yeah, the, like the same ones that we've heard a million times over. And that's one of the weird things about uh, rugby league media that I find is that we're really getting, like, at most about 20 different opinions. And, like, of those 20 different opinions, we're getting about, like, seven or eight of them over and over and over again. And the rest of them just seem to, you know, follow their lead. It's kind of weird in that sense. But, um, yeah, it would be nice to see the NRL go outside of the normal names that they sort of tend to go towards. And maybe, you know, there was a lot of players that have played in the NRL. Maybe they should ask their opinions. Well, yeah, they should have a, a player poll for every single person yeah. who played in the NRL from round one, 2010 till now mm-hmm. to name who, who their best 17 would be. There's only 1,100 odd players in that time. Yeah, that's not bad, hey? You get a good good result that way. Yeah, yeah, maybe do it through the Players Association or something. Yeah. Um, that would be a really, really cool way to do it, actually. So, Andrew Johns has named his team of the decade. Mm. He's got Billy Slater, Manu Vadavai, Justin Hodges, Greg Inglis, Jarrett Hayne, Thurston Cronk, Tom Malolo, Sam Burgess, Boyd Cordner, Matt Scott, Cameron Smith, Andrew Fafita with Jesse Bromwich, Sonny Bill Williams, Paul Gallon, and Tom Trebojevic on the bench. Yeah, some of those names to me are absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, M- Manu Vaduvai, really? Like, yeah. I mean, a, a man who whose career can be best described as rocks and diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't um, know so- if you can put a rocks and diamonds player into a team of the decade. You kind of need the diamonds players. Exactly. Uh, Sonny Bill Williams, like, what the fuck? That's ridiculous. Um, yeah. It's weird. Every time I, cl- every time I click on this article that has the, the different teams of the decade, 
it changes. They take pl- people away. They add them. Now Phil Gould's one's there. It's so weird. <laughs> well, let's be honest. The opinions yeah. of those people mean nothing because people haven't tuned in here to fear, hear Phil Gould's opinion. Exactly. They can go on Twitter and find his 37 accounts on there and get his opinion on there whenever they like. Yeah, until he goes off of Twitter because somebody, you know, questioned him about something he said and then he jumps off of social media altogether and then he waits three more months and jumps back on because he needs it. He needs your 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 talk, your fucking opinions. He needs you to, to get involved, to follow him. He wants that positive reinforcement. <clears throat> Yeah, he needs to feel validated. Yeah, that's that's an easy and, way to say it. And he, well, he he hates social media so much that he loves being on it, and he can't yeah. keep away from it. I wonder what his um, burner account is called. It'd be PG with a phone number, surely. <laughs> that's pretty much how they do it these days. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny actually. <laughs> but yeah, the people have tuned into us hear real rugby league experts give their opinions and uh we're about to give them yeah so um we'll we'll do what we always do and that is we'll name our teams separately yeah and we'll we'll go we'll thrash out the differences and come up with a official furgo freak pod uh team of the century a consensus all right yeah who do you want to get do you want to go first or do you want me to go well, first should, should we read them both? Should we read ours out in full, or should we just say who we've got for each position one at a time? Yeah, maybe that's the best way to do we'll, it. We'll, do, we'll change we up a bit, right? Discuss them. Yeah. So at fullback, I've got Billy Slater. I have Billy Slater as well. Oh, that's a lock. Um, Bloke's a freak. He really is. That that was that was so easy to pick him. Yeah, like, he was one of. Easy. He was definitely one of the first pick. You go through, you just think of that that maroon spine and just go right. Well, there's your lock right there. And, Move on. Yeah, pretty much. Um, on one wing, I've got Semi Radraja. Yep, I picked him. And on the other, I've got Valentine Holmes. Okay, now on the other wing, I selected Jared Hayne. Jared Hayne? Yeah, I, I picked Hayne. Um, and we have to make it clear right now that we pick, we wanted to pick the best 17. So that it didn't have to be in their main positions. Obviously, they had had to have played those positions quite a bit, and yeah, I picked Hayne. He's a performer on the wing for uh, for New South Wales, and yeah, I, I couldn't go past him to be honest. Oh, I don't know. I reckon Holmes is better. You reckon it's like that twenty ten to twenty nineteen Hayne? I think yep. Holmes outplayed him. You reckon? Wow. Yeah. Easy. Do you reckon he was better overall player though? Yes, in that period, yes, absolutely. Wow. See, I would, I would definitely say Hayne for sure. I think Hayne stopped being the absolute beast when he went to the NFL and he came back woeful. Oh, and definitely, yeah. Holmes started out very good and just kept getting better. Yeah. I mean, he was pretty damn good. Um, Maybe we'd need to coin flip for this one. We'll come back to that one. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, at centre, I've got Greg Inglis. Yep, easy. And I've got Josh Morris. Okay, now I had Michael Jennings, right? But I would definitely see an argument where Morris was better for longer. So yeah. he had the longevity, and, whereas and Jennings... Likewise, likewise, I'd say that Michael Jennings also had higher peaks. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, the, the last... I would say at least four years for Jennings haven't been brilliant. He's been okay and sort of tailing off this year a little bit, I think. I think his legs are a bit gone on him this year. But, uh, yeah, I I would agree completely that his Jennings' best football was better than Morris's, but Morris was more consistent for longer. What we could do then is discuss, would Josh Morris be ahead of Holmes and Hayne? Oh, man. Or would Michael Jennings be ahead of them? Um, I would have... See, I would have uh, Hayne... Oh, man. Because the thing about Hayne and Jennings that gets me is even while New South Wales weren't competing with Queensland, they were New South Wales' two best players during that time, in my opinion. Um, They were outstanding. 
I'd and argue, that... though, that Jennings, even in his last four years, yeah. he's still better than what Hayne was in his last few years. Um, I think the I think the form slide of Hayne in the last few years since coming back from the NFL, bar that brief period where he got picked for New South Wales again, mm-hmm. has been much worse than what Jennings has been. I think Jennings for the decade mm. is consistently better than Hayne. See, I think I think that Hayne started to get back a little bit of his form. I think when he came back from the NFL, his body had to readapt to um, uh, the conditions that the NRL allows you to compete under, and so I, I think that his body had to readapt, and it started getting there. Um, I don't think he was as terrible as a lot of people feel he was. I think he was all right, but he just wasn't that same superstar level when he come back. Um, eh, man. We've got some discussion to do over that pair. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll go to some easy ones then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Halves. I've got Thurston and Croc. Yes. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> um. At prop, I've got Andrew Fafita and Paul Vaughan. We've gone different players again. Okay, yep. so I've gone Jesse Bromwich. Yep, that's not bad. Yeah, and I, that's a more of a consistency over the entire time. Like, which is which is funny because I've gone for the the bloke who's been a bit up and down, mm. which is what you did with Hayne. Mm-hmm. And you've gone for the consistent bloke with Bromwich, which is what I did with George Morris. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> funny, hey. Dude, I picked was Matt Scott, you know, which is... I, 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 cons- I considered for Fita, but I, the, the up and down, like he's just not that consistent, and that hurt him for me. <laughs> the only reason yep. I didn't pick Vaughn is because... I want to see him do it over a, a more extended period of time. Like he, he most likely will be the prop for the next decade for me. I'm a big fan of his as well. Um, but Matt's got to feel like he's the majority of his career was in this last 10 years. For many years, he was the first pick for Australia and Queensland. Um, he won a premiership for the, for the um, Cowboys and Bromwich. I mean, it's just so super consistent, you know, so that's why I picked them. Yeah, no, look, I'm I'm happy to concede for feeder for Bromwich. Okay, yep, yeah. all right. Uh, Vaughan and Scott, yeah, I don't know. Look, I would rather have, I think, if you're going for their best, I think I would have Vaughan in the... Uh, so- I, as I know. was saying as I was saying before we went on, I'm a, I don't know why or how, but I'm a massive Paul Vaughan fan. Mm. So... Yeah, look, I and the thing is, too... Australia really struggled to produce modern day rugby league props for a long time, and Vaughan is one of those, and of one of the top ones, you know. So, look, I would if you want to put Vaughan in for Scott, I would do that. All right, <clears throat> maybe Scott can get a spot on the bench yet. Yeah. Okay, Hooker. This is hard. Cameron Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Very difficult one. Uh, on to the second row. <laughs> Actually, right. should we do second row or should we do the second row and lock? We'll do second row and lock because I think yeah. we've, got, we've got some players here but in different order. Yeah. Okay, so I've got for the second row and lock. Um, starting in the back row, Jason Tormalolo, Wade Gray and Paul Gallen. Okay, on my back three were Paul Gallen, uh, Jake Trebojevic and... Jason Tamalala. Okay, so we've got Jake Trebojevic versus Wade Graham, essentially. Yeah, and man, I know you love Wade Graham. Huge um, fan of him. That bloke's a freak. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. no, no. We might free up a spot on the bench yet. Okay, okay. We'll come back to the contentious ones. We'll, yeah. we'll come back to we've, them. We've, uh, we've got three contentious ones at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the bench, I've got Roger Tuivasa-Shek. Yep. Lock. James Tedesco. Ooh, yep. James Maloney. Yep. I got him. And Benji Marshall. I got him as well. Okay. So who's James to Tedesco? I had Cameron Munster. Ooh, okay. 
Oh, man, that's a difficult one, hey? Um, Munster's done it in a couple of different positions too. But you would ha- you'd have to go James Tedesco. I think he's... Oh, damn it. Yeah, I think you have to go Tedesco. Yeah. Yeah, put Tedesco in for Munster. Well... Would Tedesco be a better winger than Josh Morris, Jennings, Hayne, or Holmes? No. Okay, put him on the bench. Would any of those four I just mentioned deserve to be in, on the bench ahead of Tedesco? Uh, I don't think so. What do you reckon? I don't think so either. Yeah. I mean, Tedesco's gone. He's Tedesco's career has sort of been like very, very good to maybe the best in the world. Like he's he's there's never been a point where it's you've been disappointed in James Tedesco and improving. Yeah, that's the thing. The kid's freakish. He's he's Billy Slater, Mark Two. Yeah, pretty much in such short succession. Man. Okay. So it's we're a left nice with to have, by the way. I love yeah. it. Yeah. The last. So we're left with. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we'll go with Michael Jennings at centre. Okay. And I'll, um, Holmes yeah. and Hayne at, at wing. I'm still not sure on. And Graham and Jake Trebojevic at second row. Okay. How about I give you? How about I give you? Wade Graham in the second row, if you give me Hayne on the wing. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That's good. Excellent. So, so, so name our official. Is that our official team done? Yep. Our official team is Billy Slater, Semi Radraja, Greg Inglis, Michael Jennings, Jared Hayne, Thurston, Cooper Cronk, Jesse Bromwich, Cameron Smith, Paul Vaughan, uh, Paul Gallen, Jake Trebojevic, Jason Tormalolo, Roger Tuivasa-Shek, James Tedesco, James Maloney, Benji Marshall. Okay, I think you ch- James uh, Jake Trebojevic in the second row. I gave you Graham. Oh, sorry, that was that's right, Wade Graham. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Wade Graham. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, I like that team. That's a pretty damn good team, actually. That is damn good. <laughs> like, yeah, I we we we'll, <laughs> might put that up on the website. Um, I don't know. Yes. That, yeah, we'll put it up on the website, leaguefreak.com. I'll chuck that up today. So, but yeah, I think... We only had, uh, what was it, one, two, three, four, six differences out of 17. Yeah, not bad. And we talked about this a little bit earlier. The forwards were the most difficult part, and it was more because there were so many good, consistent forwards in the game. Um, there weren't too many that really stood out outside of, like... I mean, obviously, Tamalolo, it was easy... Gallon was pretty easy. But then after that, and Smith, obviously, at, at Hooker, but after that, it was like, could have had very, very big differences, really. Could have selected a lot of different players. Um, and our bench, I mean, we had three of our bench players were the same, which is pretty amazing, really. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, it's a damn, damn good side. So you know, uh, it, you know that what it shows is how good you are at, Talking about rugby league, I mean, you're just outstanding, Andrew. Yeah, stop that. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I I just had no idea actually for another another team we could have put together, and we didn't yeah. get to discuss off air. Yep, that was who we thought might be the team of the century in ten years' time. Oh, for the the upcoming uh, ten years. Yeah, Ooh. for the twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty nine. Yeah, I guess you'd have to look at a lot of player ages and stuff for that, wouldn't you? Um, there's well, you're going to be looking teams. at pretty much anyone who's currently under the age of, say, 28. Yeah. Like, I would think that the likes of... Let me think. Well, fullback's going to be Tedesco, Roger Tuivasa, yep. Shek, Kalen Ponga. Yeah, it's going to be between them. Uh, and Tom Trevojevic. To... Jesus. But you could even add him as a winger, hey. I think it, it, he's he's going to be a winger in terms of um, rep but, footy. But the wing, you're also going to have Josh Adokar. Yep, he has Suliasu to be there. Vunavalu. Oh, man. 
any Fijian. Yeah. <laughs> well, There's a few Adokar, of them now. Adokar is really the only player that is allowed to be a winger and not Fijian, in my opinion. Exactly. The guy's um, a gun. He's Dead amazing. Too, I mean, you could end up with Bronson Cherry. Oh, man. Um... Curtis Scott, if he if he gets back on the field and injury free, Bird, if he does the same, yeah. Um, Tupo, Manu, Rapana, <sighs> sorry, not Rapana, or Lolua. You got Rapana on the wing. Um, Croker, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> you knew I was getting there when I went to the camp. How dare you? I knew it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Naden could be a possibility. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty amazing. Like, I mean, you know the thing to do is just go back and look at our under-24 team. Well, that's true too, yeah. That's exactly what, we, you, like, that's exactly who you would do. Just look at our under twenty four team. It's giving me an idea for our future episodes. We could just do these for every decade. We'll do yeah. Um, yeah, I was wondering who else, what else could we do? Well, we've got we've got our team of the decade from Super League. Oh yes, that's all right. Yeah. So um, should we strapping... do this the same way, or should we just take it in turns doing that one? Um, I reckon we name. Let me think. I reckon that we name the because I I think I I I think I nailed it with this one, right? But I know yours is very very different from mine. Yes. So if yeah, maybe we could go through it one by one, but I don't. Okay. I don't know either let's, let's do it one by one and pick, pick okay. the best out of that. Okay. Um, I can guarantee that because uh, the Super League's had so many more players, because it's longer seasons, more competitions. I'm fairly certain that we will not have any double ups. Yeah. So this will be a good conversation, this one. Definitely, definitely. And we did so much work. Get, we actually did more work on this than we did the NRL one. Yeah, the NRL one was pretty easy compared yeah. to this. This one compared took up a one. lot of time. A lot of research. All right, so at fullback, mm-hmm. I've got Morgan Escarte. Ooh, very, very good Frenchman. Uh, Who have you damn, got? he's a good player. Yeah. I have gone Benjamin Barber. Oh. Uh, St. Helens legend. Yeah, you've, you've trumped me there. Okay. He had a stunning period there in the, in the Super League. Brilliant, brilliant time over in St. Helens. That, f- had a feeling he never wanted to be there, but he still played very good football. Carved he didn't clap, didn't clap the fans, though. They'll no, always no. remember him not clapping them. Yeah. Um, on on one wing, I've got Foward Yaha, prolific try scorer out there for Catalan. Yeah, he is a very very good try scorer, fantastic try scoring record. Um, I went with I went with an Irishman, Pat Pat Richards, a phenomenal point scorer. He, do you know he averaged just over, uh, well, actually almost eleven points a game over his entire Super League career. That's pretty amazing. The other thing he was fantastic at, short kickoffs. Unbelievable. And those really, those really high ones that just kept going up and just let the yeah. defense to smash whoever's going to catch it. Pretty much. It's like, I don't know um, where he learned that, what part of Ireland he, he learned that skill. But I'd Probably down in, down in Cork somewhere. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be deep in Ireland. Yeah. Um, on the other wing, I've got Tony Gigo. Okay, he was a fantastic player as well. Oh, Another Frenchman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, he he might trump my one, but I don't know. I I picked Joel Monahan as my winger. Ooh, tell you what, his try scoring record over there, outstanding. I like try try game. Was it Warrington he played at? Yep, yep. And um, then, yeah, 150 odd tries and 170 odd games or something in his career there. Phenomenal. Yeah, he was very good at uh, at chasing down kicks and stuff. And, like, you get him close to the line, 
it doesn't matter how what you did in defence in, in Super League. He was like a dog with a bone. He just was getting to that line. <laughs> uh, I was waiting for it. Mm. <laughs> um, centre, Vincent Duport. Okay, and who was your other centre? Sebastian Ragwin. Wow. Your team's bloody good. Well, um, test players. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not picking crap team here. I'm going for test players. I'm going for the elite. Nah, yours is quality. Um, mm. I went with George Carmont and Chris Hicks. Um, just dynamic players. Absolutely dynamic players. And, like, athletic. World-class players. Yep. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Um, at, uh, at five eighth, I've got Lucas Albert. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's a very good player. I yep. actually, I actually went with an English player. Yep. Um, I went with Randy Chase. Yeah. I mean, he did actually play for England too. Very, very good player. Yeah. Uh, but one of the best players that England has produced probably in the last 40 years, I would say. Well, he, he's definitely up there. Yeah, uh, absolute game winner. Yeah, if they had a like a, a half century team, he'd definitely be in the conversation. Has to be. Mm. Um, half back, I got Thomas Bosk. Bosky, the old Bosco. The Bosky. Ah, uh, well, I went with another Englishman in Blake Austin. Um, you know they say that English halfbacks are gone gone forever, but Blake Austin is proving people wrong. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's firm favourite for the, the Men of Steel this year. Yeah, yeah, I think it's between him and uh, Scotland's Lachlan Coote. I think it'll be between those two. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough competition there. Yeah, yeah, Although, it's just... You've, you've, you've pretty much done me for, I think, for the... The outside backs. The you reckon? Wing, the wingers and the full back. Yeah. And the five eighth. Yep. I think I'm gonna have to pull rank though on the half back. I reckon Bosky might have him. Just because he's been there a bit longer, he's bit more more acclimatized, and he's played much more test footy. Yeah, more consistency over a long period of time. I mean, uh you know, I'd I would never like to talk down a young half back, uh, especially young British half back like uh, Austin, but I want to see him do it consistently over a number of years. So I agree. Yeah. Um, at uh, a prop, I've got uh, my two props are Remy Casti and Jerome Gousset. Yeah, that I mean, two of the best French players in the last probably thirty years, I would say. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Ca- Casti even proves himself in the NRL. One of the very, very few French players to come over here. Yeah, and let alone make it in the NRL. Yeah, and he did did all right too. Yeah, um, I went my my front rowers, uh, Willie Mason and Grant Millington, which you know, size, speed, athleticism, grunt, just really all round great players. To be honest with you. Mason was also always a machine. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Loved his work. I might. I think we might have to go with Casti and Mason there for the props. Yeah, uh, I think so too. I think so too. Split, there might, split. Might it. be a spot for, for Millington on the bench yet. Because mm. I struggle with my bench. Okay. Um, at hooker, I've got Ellie Pellissier. All right. I've gone with uh, Kane Bentley. Kane Bentley. Yeah. Yeah, just an uh, outstanding player. Um, so many memories. I mean, it's hard to pick out one highlight, really. <laughs> really hard to pick out one really highlight. Really difficult. Very, very difficult. <laughs> um, in the back row, I've got Oliver Alima and yep. uh, Gregory Muniz. Okay. I've gone with... Um, well, basically, Super League's Arthur Beetson in David Fafida. Naturally. And, yeah, and I've gone with, uh, I like Beaver. The Menzies. Yeah. 
Steve Mansis. That is hard to ignore. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he went over there, um, you know, as Matthew Johns would say, in the peak of his career, and just carved them up. Yeah, consistently, everywhere. Yeah. Um, at lock, I've got Jason Battieri. Very, very good player. Um, I've gone with another player that reminds me of Arthur Beetson a little bit in Super League, and that's Adam Cuthbertson. Just, yeah, just a superstar, really. Um, you know, one of European Rugby League's finest. There we go. Well, I reckon we might go with your second rowers. Okay. And uh, I, I reckon Battieri. Yeah, like, just, oh, yeah, yeah. I'd go he's with played, that. He's played a bit more test footy, so. Yeah, just a bit. It's And it's just through luck, really. I mean, Cuthbertson bit unlucky at times. It's, yeah, I mean, it's tight, that one. Yeah. Okay, so bench, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if some of your um, discarded players from the starting 13 will probably make it on the bench here because mine was a okay. bit... I struggled here. Okay, all right. So I had so, uh, Roman Navarrete, Remy Marginet, Theo Fages, and Benjamin Garcia. Ooh. All test Gar- players. Tell you what, Garcia was a player. Damn, yeah. he was a good player. Um, my bench, but I mean, this bench is ridiculous. It's just got stars everywhere. I've gone with Jeff Lima. I've gone with Daniel Holdsworth. I've gone with, uh, another Englishman, actually, Danny Solomona and Ben Pomeroy. He, wow. uh, yeah, fantastic. I think you know, that, you know, Pomeroy used to play for the Sharks in the NRL. And I think yeah. the Panthers. Yeah, he did, actually. He's uh, a little fantastic. Fact, not, many, not many people know about that about him because his Super League career was so phenomenal. Yeah, one of those fantastic um, second rower slash centers that are just fantastic players, those those players. Great um, hands. Had great yeah, hands. Known for his hands. Known uh, for Big Jeff step. Lima. I remember Jeff Lima when he signed his contract 47 years ahead of time. I think when he was born, they actually said, listen, in in 34 years from now, do you want to sign three years for Wigan? And his parents said yes. Um, Daniel Holdsworth, well, I mean, what else can you say? Daniel Holdsworth, that's, that's all that needs to be said there. And, uh, yeah, another Englishman. I've got a lot of Englishmen in my side. Yeah, Denny Solomona. Yeah, he's just one of those superstars of the game. Um, unbelievable player. You reckon the uh, the English would have been absolutely chuffed when he said he wanted to become an English citizen? I think so, yeah. I think that they would have been, uh, you know, clinking their glasses of gravy when <laughs> he said that he wanted to become a palm. All right, so who should go on the bench, given that you've also got... Cuthbertson, Millington, Bentley, Austin, and Hicks to uh, consider there. Well, I'm, would... I'm willing. Yeah. I'm willing to forego. Yeah. The four test players I've named there. Yeah. For any of those four there, if you wish, or if you want to split it two and two. Yeah, let's do it two and two. Like I would have to go. Um, well, let's I would see. Have we'll, to go... we'll, we'll pull who's been left out. So I've got Escare, mm. Yaha, Raguan, Gigo. Albert, Gousset, Alima, and Muniz from the 13 who haven't been picked. You've Any of those you reckon should be in the conversation? Yeah, Escare and uh, Gise, I would have both of them. And you know what? I think that from the ones that... I think Cuthbertson has to be there. Yep. And uh, who's the other one? That's, uh, oh, uh, Blake Austin, maybe. Because I like I don't want to yeah. be. You know. Well, the other ones were were Chris Hicks, Blake Austin, Kane Bentley, Grant Millington, Lima, Holdsworth, Solomona, and Pomeroy. Mm, yeah, I'll I'll put Austin in there because people say that I'm biased against English players, and I just want to make make it clear that I'm not. So I'm going with Austin. Okay, I'll put that down as the bench there. So uh, English team of the of the uh, decade. Well, not- not English, Sorry, Super League. Super League, because because they're a uh, 
they're very much a uh, multicultural competition over there. Very, very. Uh, is Ben Barber, Pat Richards, Vincent Duport, George Carmont, John Monaghan, Rangy Chase, Thomas Bosk, Remy Casti, Eloy Pellissier, Willie Mason, David Fafita, Steve Menzies, Jason Battieri, Morgan Escare, Jerome Gousset, Adam Cuthbertson, Blake Austin. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I like. I think we've nailed it there. We haven't left out anybody of any quality, which is good. And that's all. That's the main thing. You don't want to leave out anybody that is an obvious choice that should have been there instead. So, and I think that we've done that with that the two teams that we've named. I'd love to see these two teams play one another. It'd be close, hey? Like, um, I'd give it to the Super League side. Yeah, I think especially when you consider that the bench for the Australian team is all backs. Yeah. yeah. I think Gusey and Cuthbertson would rip them apart after the the first bench rotations come in. And I think the other thing you look at too is like how many tries they score. Um, just well, so many tries. Look at the strike in that that uh, Super League side. You got Barber, Richards, Carmont, Deport, Monaghan. I mean, those blokes just lived to score tries and points. Yeah, I mean that that's all they did. Like I remember John Monaghan. Um, in an interview once saying, all I do is walk dogs and score tries, bruh. And so, like, that was just the lifestyle he led. Yeah. Don't they call walking dogs in England dogging? Yeah, well, that's my understanding of it. Um, and there's lots of really nice websites if you look them up. They've got a real culture of, um, you know, walking your dog and stuff in... in uh, like wilderness areas, they don't have too many wilderness areas, but yeah, if you look it up dogging in the UK, you can um, go dogging dogging in the bush. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's it's a real nice nice place in some ways. Yeah, that's fascinating. I tell you what, if you want to be uh, the life of the party at one of the um, dogging uh, groups that they've got over there, turn up with a bowl of gravy, man. Everyone will love you. Should you bring chips? Um, yeah, maybe chips as well. The the people that they don't like, and, and this is a miscue that some people do sometimes, they turn up with curry and it just doesn't work. You've got to have the gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curry's, curry's not, an, it's not an all-the-time food. No, it's a sometimes food. That's right, yeah. You, you don't want to overindulge on curry. Yeah, exactly. It's like the food pyramid, like where the bottom is just gravy and then above that is chips and above yeah. that is fish well, and you get towards the top and it's curry. Just like the food pyramid, you know, has different foods at the bottom. Hmm. You've obviously got your chicken gravy, your yes. original gravy, your beef gravy, hmm. uh, the gravy you probably use on pork. Mm-hmm. Um, the gravy that's in the Bay Marie, and it has to be real gravy too. It it can't be like, um, like the the instant stuff, or like for instance, you know, <coughs> the the stock cubes. Like there's a bu- bunch of different um stocks that you can get, so you got to be careful with what you use. It's got to be thick. It's got to be like a big chunky soup. Yeah, you you can't you it can't be drunk through a straw. No, God, you've got to have man's gravy. It's got to be yeah. thick stuff. Yeah, it's almost got to be like a gelatine. Yeah, it's got to come out with the same consistency that it goes in with. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, mm. where do we go from here? I think we went there and we've come back and <laughs> the team of the decade. I think we named two very good teams of the decades. I've been seeing some of the teams of the decades named on Twitter and some of them. I mean, one person named Cole Felt. I was like, what the fuck, man? But yeah, I think our team nailed it. I'm very pleased with that team. Well, I think we come think- to a good consensus. I think Kyle Felt will get named if you're making a team of North Queensland wingers from the decade. Yeah, as long as, like, uh, Brenton Bowen isn't there. Yeah, he'd, he'd be a shot. 
That's interesting. I was looking at the uh, the team of the decade for Darren Lockett, and it's mostly just Queenslanders with one or two New South Welshmen in there. Mm-hmm. Um, not biased much. I thought he might have just gone for people who had less hair than him. Man, that would be difficult. What yeah. Actually, when you say less hair, okay, do you mean hair that he owns or has purchased? Well, a bit of both. Okay. Because he, if he has it as it's just hair that he, he made himself, yep. then that's a very small list. You're talking about like Matt Scott. Um, <laughs> man, who else? Remember when there used to be a lot of ball players? What happened yeah. to that? And why can okay? Here's a question for you. Okay, we live in Australia with pretty harsh climates and stuff. Yeah. Why do we all have hair, but over in England they all go bald when they're like 24? Well, I dare say hair needs sun. It must. Hey, it's like it's like grass. Like in order for grass to grow, it needs water and sun. Yeah, and you can't give it too much of one and not enough of the other. Okay, so over there it gets a ton of water and no sun. Trying to think if you you think of like places where people live in warm climates and like with very sunny climates, you're right. A lot of thick haired people. Yeah. We we don't need to worry about putting caffeine in our hair. No, not at all. And like you think of someone like Nathan Brown and he had long flowing locks as a player, goes over to England, comes back bald. Yeah, completely. I wonder. I wonder if he felt bad, like he went over there and saw all these English people with no hair and thought, oh, "I feel bad having all of this hair." Yeah, I don't want to put anyone offside. I'll just shave it all off so they don't feel so bad. Automatically Possibly. got respected by everyone. In fact, what if what if Darren Lockyer, all he's done since he retired is just sun his head, like he says, like I spend like six hours a day with my head just out in sunshine. And I just grew the hair. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, I, I wonder if he's got a hat, and the hat's just a one of those ones, just the brim. Yeah, and like there's he, nothing on top, like the one that that uh, tennis players wear sometimes, just the visor and nothing else. Yeah, like a a, a poker, you know, a poker person from the like eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. for some reason, you need to have a visor when you're inside in a dark room. Mm. That somehow makes it harder for people to tell whether you're talking shit or not. I never true. understood all that glasses and hat wearing crapper that goes on in poker. I yeah, I, like it's apparently it's to so that they don't give away their tells. But it's like you can't brag about being a really good poker player and then cover your face with all sorts of shit. Yeah. So are you are you able to go in there then and just wear a paper bag with holes in the eyes and that was it? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Do you know they had a thing where they had a celebrity poker tournament and Kim Kardashian, she went in and she was wearing glasses, but the glasses were mirrored glasses. <laughs> so everyone could say, oh, no, I'm not even joking. Like, you look it up, uh, it were mirrored that's... glasses. You could see her cards. What a genius. Yeah. She, is, she, is, she, is, she what, is she what they call an influencer? Yeah, yeah. She's like yeah. us. She influences people to buy shit and do shit. Um, so yeah. Well, speaking of things that we can influence, influence people to do, yes. go over, go over to leaguefreak.com and get involved in our genuine, proper NRL poll. Mm. Came out in conjunction with our uh, episode last week about the uh, NRL poll, looking at all the quotation marks, big issues in the game. Uh, we decided to do a poll of our own with actual big issues being asked. So get over there and check that out. We'll put some links up on the on the social so you can get access to it and get involved. Mm-hmm. But um, we'll be doing episodes very soon, probably this week actually, and go over the results. So get in there and get voting, people. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually retweet that article. I'll do it on Fergo Freak Pod on Twitter so you can have a look at it through there. Um, because it like there's been a few different articles I've posted since, and it'll just be easier, I think, just yep. finding it there. Um, but yeah, it's that we asked a lot of questions the NRL refused to ask, and we want to get to the bottom of what fans want. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, definitely get on that. Um, go over to Patreon and get get onto the uh, Rugby League Project Patreon. Go in there and make a donation per month. 
um, one, two, five bucks, whatever you like. Um, every bit helps. I it's, believe uh, you got a massive, massive donation from an amazing, wonderful person. Yeah, the the boss of the podcast, Nadine. She she's making a uh, a month or two ago. She she chipped in twenty five dollars per month. That's amazing. That's so yeah. cool. So obviously, not everyone can be as awesome as Nadine, but by all means, try if you like. Yeah, yeah. But um, see if we can. I wonder if anybody can beat twenty five bucks a month. I did have someone initially who was doing far more than that, but he's he's not been able to keep it up because of you know personal matters at his own end but um so he was Nadine, nadine's the current champion yeah she's the current champion yeah wow she holds the the record now then um yeah. so I think, yeah uh, next following that would be andrew voss uh-huh and jay dwight who's actually okay. also on twitter okay i think they're the next the next closest well if you want to get talked about on the podcast just knock Nadine off the perch at the top, and you can, you know do it. Just do it. There you go. There's a challenge. We'll, we'll put you on the we'll put you on the staff as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea actually. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyone who who donates, let me know, um, and you'll get followed by myself and the RLP Twitter account, and you know we'll find some and, other people to follow you as well. And lost glorious league freak. There you go. So, especially if you're a business, if you want to get about what's that, fourteen thousand people on on Twitter to to recognise you, then uh, there you go. Those three accounts will get it done for you. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Anything else we could probably uh, give a plug to or a shout out to? Uh, no, that's about it. I uh, I'm going to make a really really stupid purchase soon, um, and I was asking people what the the most stupid purchases they made have been but we might save that for the next podcast so yeah. if you've made a dumb purchase just uh tweet it at me just tell me what it was how stupid yeah. it was we'll even put that in the live show yeah that'd be fun we'll have to do a live podcast sometime soon too i think we might do that one maybe one night coming up soon sounds like a plan all right well people uh thanks for tuning in once again i uh, hope you enjoyed the uh the episode and um I can't see how you could argue with any of the, the teams we announced, but feel free if you want to. We're experts. Um, yep. Respond to the, the tweet with the episode in it, which will be up later on today, and uh, give us your your best 17 for the Super League and NRL for the last decade. It will. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you later.